When you first log into Criteria Hub, you come to the home screen dashboard. From the dashboard, it allows us to search for criteria in three different ways. We've got the compare search here. So that's looking for a single item of criteria and it will show you um, whether a lender is acceptable or not acceptable for that criteria. You can also search by lender. So the browse by lender function is down there. So when you click into there, that will give you a list of all the lenders that are available. Select the lender that you want and it will give you their criteria. You've also got a multi-search facility and this is where the power of Criteria Hub really comes into its own. So with multi-search, you can chain together up to six different criteria. And of course, when you do a case, it's not just one thing that's usually um, needed to be searched on. It is many different uh, criteria. So this allows you to search up to six. And as with all criteria, you've got the ability to search on both residential and buy to let. So that's from the tiles within the screen. You also have the option to search for these different bits of information using the search bar on the left hand side. You can also see there we've got highlighted um, the affordability hub function and that's how you access that. And I'll show you a bit, show you that a bit later. But we'll start with the compare search. As I say, we're going to look at an individual criteria and the criteria that I'm going to look at right now are some more niche criteria, not, not kind of your everyday things that you'll come across. Just to show you again how Criteria Hub can not only help you look for criteria, but and also explain what certain criteria mean too. So if we look at residential, click on there, that brings you to this screen, which allows you to search either at a high level. So if it was uh, the applicant, for example, if I click that, you can see I've got lots and lots of different criteria under applicant. And likewise, if we come to adverse, you can see that I've got all of the adverse criteria lumped together in one long list that I can search for. But down here in the blue section, it gets a bit more granular. So I can look for court, county court judgments. CCJs. There you are. That's just specific to CCJ criteria, likewise with defaults and other, as you can see, other more detailed criteria searching. The other way we can search for criteria as well is by entering a keyword. Now, by entering a few letters of the criteria that we're looking for, the system will kind of know what you're, what you're looking at based on those letters. So the, the criteria that I'm actually looking for now is tenants in common with unequal share of property. Now, that's not a criteria that you're going to come across every day. Um, and so as a result of that, you might have a case where they've said, oh, yeah, we don't own the, it is a tenants in common. We don't own equal shares of the property and you just need a quick refresher as well as to what that might actually mean. So I've just put in tenor and it's found my tenancy in common with an equal share. If I click on that, what that's now going to do, that's going to bring me a list of lenders with their value. So whether it's acceptable or not acceptable, you can see there that I've got the lenders as well. But more importantly, up here, I've got the criteria name, but I've also got, there it is, but I've also got a description of what that criteria actually means as well. And, and you can see there, it indicates if a lender could potentially lend on residential applications where joint ownership is set up on tenants in common, i.e. applicant A owns 70%, applicant B owns 30%. So, as I say, it's not a usual circumstance that you will see. So we get that explanation there to be sure we know what we're looking for. And as I say, you then come down and the lenders are list, listed on the left hand side, whether it's acceptable or not. And you can see that acceptable is in green. Uh, and as we come down the list, you'll eventually come to the section where they're not acceptable. So anything below the green line where it's in that, that pinky red color, is, is non-acceptable, i.e. they won't accept applications on that basis. 
You'll also see that there's other information on here as well. So um, is it been verified by the lender? Absolutely. Our criteria is absolutely verified by the lender. And in the majority of cases, the lenders themselves actually update this too. So it's obviously very important for them to keep this criteria updated so that the, the results returned are accurate. Um, and of course, from your point of view, you can be assured that the lenders do update it regularly. Um, and there is also uh, within the system, it will display where that, um, when a lender has updated the criteria. You've also got some detailed info as well about what that criteria item means. So when we click on that, on the right hand side here, what are called mortgages say in this example, they will consider joint applications where the property. So that's great. We know that they will um, potentially do that case for you. Okay. And there are other bits of information as well that you can look at. So lender info, we've got contact details, BDM details. This is also really quite important. So if you did feel that um, you thought that the criteria was inaccurate, if you click on here, flag inaccuracy, that then opens up a text box. Type in what you believe is in, inaccurate, and that will then go straight through to the lender for them to action um, and uh, update the criteria if, if needs be. Okay. So that's on a residential. I'm also going to show you the slight difference between residential and um, buy to let. So if we just go back to the dashboard, you can see here, we click on buy to let, again on an individual search, but you can see now that the criteria has slightly changed. Down the bottom here, we're now looking at houses of multiple occupancy, ICR with capital raising, portfolio landlords, all of those different kind of criteria which are specific to buy to let, which wouldn't be applicable to residential there within the buy to let section. Now, the criteria that I want to look for now, if we go again to the keyword, I'm gonna put in energy, and this is absolutely what I'm looking for, the energy performance rating, F or G. So that may not be particularly apparent what that means at the moment, but if I click on that once again, as we do with the residential criteria, it gives you a description of that criteria, but it also gives you um, some really useful information, much more detailed information than you might actually expect to see. So in here, it gives you the regulation, regulatory requirements as to what that means. So basically, you can't rent out a property um, unless you have specific circumstances, that's an F or G rating. But of course there are some lenders, as you can see down here, that whilst you can't necessarily rent it out, they will still um, accept a mortgage on it. And there are some surprising ones in here. And actually one of those um, which surprised me was, was Santander. Now you can see against those, I've got the information, but I've also got a warning. Now what a warning is, it's, additional criteria that you wouldn't necessarily see on a lender's website. So if we go into the information button here, so what Santander says, Santander could potentially offer buy to let mortgages on properties that have an EPC. Great, that's brilliant. Um, we know that they can do it because it says acceptable. However, the additional information there that we've got is on the warning, subject evaluation, of course, and landlord responsibility to keep property in line with landlord regulations. So that's a, an extra little level of detail that you wouldn't necessarily find going directly to the lender's website. They might say, yes, we can lend on it potentially, but they wouldn't give you that extra bit of information which Criteria does, okay, Criteria Hub does. So if I close that now, again, exactly the same as the residential, you get that slight bit of uh, uh, lender information, you get the contact details, and again, if needs be, you can flag an inaccuracy as well. Okay, and I'm going to take you back now to the, um, the dashboard, and we'll have a look at browse by lender. 
So um, again, can do this for residential or for buy to let. If we can, we're going to go for residential and I'm just going to quickly take uh, a look at uh, somebody like Hinkley and Rugby, for example. So just click on the, the name of the lender and you can see here I've got the criteria item. Again, I can expand that and it will give me the notes of what that criteria item actually means. And it gives you the, um, whether it's acceptable. So there you go, can be ignored, acceptable, no months. Um, and this, this bit here, affordability assessment is down there. So affordability assessment, charitable donations, they can be ignored, but childcare vouchers, not ignored. Okay, and as we come down, we scroll down, and I'm gonna scroll all the way down here to give you a real visual impression of just how many criteria you can search on so all that time i've just been talking i'm scrolling down i'm scrolling down i'm scrolling down and i'm keep going keep going keep going like so until we eventually come down so you that really gives you an appreciation of just how many criteria you can source on and on that basis so whilst we have over 500 criteria items that can be searched on, we have just over 49,000 bits of criteria information within the system. So across all of our lenders, across all the questions that we can ask, there's over 49,000. And of those 49,000 plus elements of criteria, Remember I mentioned the warnings bit earlier where it's giving you that additional policy information that you wouldn't necessarily see on a website. 46,000, over 46,000 bits of criteria that we have in the system aren't published on lenders' websites. Hence, putting these warnings in um, on the criteria. Okay. And again, that just shows you how much more level of detail of information you will see within Criteria Hub. So again, going back to the dashboard, I'm not going to show you a browse by lender in buy to let. It's exactly the same as in residential. I'm going to move on to this powerful bit, the multi search. Like I said, this allows us to chain up to six criteria together. And Again, I'm also going to show you how we can also produce some documentation to support our research. So I'm going to click on residential. Again, so you can see now the screen is slightly different. We've got our keyword search and we've got our um, drop downs for the high level criteria. But at the top of the screen, we've got six boxes. And this is where we're going to be seeing our criteria going into once we've done the search. The other thing is I'm going to do a search based on um, property location, property construction, and also uh, some other specialist criteria. Now, this was a case that um, was done by a, a, a real broker. I went out to see her. And she'd been on the phone for about seven hours trying to research this case. I come along and within a few seconds, we found a lender and uh, we'd also got a, uh, a, a decision in principle as well. So the case to start with was located in Scotland. There we are. So lending location is Scotland. Excellent. It was a timber frame property. So, so far, not too onerous, but we also had, just to throw into the mix, we also have agricultural restrictions on that property as well. So, as you can imagine, bringing around lots of different lender BDMs and trying to get hold of lenders um, to get an answer to that case can be quite tricky. But Criteria Hub, as I say, within a few seconds, it's going to bring us our results. And it's going to narrow the results down to about eight different lenders. So you can see here, I've got the criteria that I wanted at the top of the grid. And each of these boxes is now green because that means they will um, accept that criteria. 
Now you can also see that there are W's, so there are warnings against that criteria. And what I'm gonna go, uh, go down to, I'm actually gonna go down to NatWest in this instance. Um, but before I do, before I expand the notes, I just want you to see that where we've got a red, that means that the uh, criteria is not acceptable. And so there's no point in going to those lenders at all because they won't do an area of this criteria that we're looking on. So to start with, it's one fail. And then as you move down, you'll see that two areas of criteria. And then finally, when we get to the bottom of the list, you'll see it's all three criteria that they won't do. Okay. So yeah, I'm gonna come back to NatWest and I'm gonna expand the notes. When I expand the notes, it gives us all of the different policy details here. So yep, yeah, they lend on Scotland, brilliant. Timber frame property with cavity wall insulation is not acceptable, great to know, unless installed during construction. However, 100% timber construction properties can be considered. There you go, lovely. So tick box. So again, we then come down to the agricultural restriction. So the only acceptable agricultural tie is where the applicant must be employed in an agricultural related job. Quite a good level of detail there. And it's also subject to a maximum of LTV of 50%. But also we've got that warning as well. So we might have seen that policy note on the lender's website, but we probably wouldn't have seen this. Please note the maximum plot size normally acceptable is four hectares, 10 acres and there should be no evidence of tenancy or commercial activity. We ticked that box. And as I say, we eventually got an AIP on it as well. Now, what I can also do is print that document off. So I'm gonna export the criteria that I've uh, searched on as a PDF. So what will happen is Criteria Hub will now produce a really nice document for you, which shows you those lenders that were acceptable to that criteria. It also shows you the lenders that weren't acceptable to that criteria. So again, for your compliance file, this is really, really important because you can say, okay, um, let's try and pick an example here. So Virgin, for example, they might have an interest rate currently of 0.1% and that NatWest rate might have been 10%. But what would be the point of going to the Virgin with their 0.1% because they, they wouldn't accept some of the criteria, but the NatWest with the higher rate will accept all of our criteria. So this is really, really good evidence for your compliance file to say why you went to a particular lender. Okay. So going back to the Criteria Hub screen now, as I say, you can save that document for your compliance file and, um, and, and, and download it. And there you go, that's part of your research file. 